remember what Maurice and Alejandro told us about his Paris 2017 performance. It was only four out of nine, so it was really dismal compared to that. The game has started. This is Carlson against Amin, and there is another great, uh, perhaps even more important game today uh, in this first round. This is Wesley So against Vashila Grav. Um, I mean, the first game, the first blitz game of a day is always so important because it allows you immediately to feel the temperature for, for the players themselves as well. Are they in good shape? Does it flow? Do moves come easily? And remember yesterday we saw Magnus Carlsen against the same Bassem Amin struggling with his time and you know it was um it was he himself felt it i think immediately that he wasn't really in the right rhythm uh, yeah, he got nicked a little bit there by Masim in the very first game. No real winning chances throughout. Mm -hmm. And it just sets the tone. Even a little bit of luck that is involved in this blitz games. For example, Maxime against Wesley. So that set the tone for the day. Maxim could have easily lost that game against Wesley. And perhaps Wesley could have strung a couple of wins together. Maxime perhaps wouldn't have that impetus that he had. But that's not the way it went. He... Let that win go, led Maxime back into the game, and eventually even won. And Maxime just started on that roll. Let's see if Magnus can uh, start his day off correctly, beating I mean, Basem. He's playing his favorite Briar defense he's already used to before in this event. It's an opening that has been super solid for so many years, but not really fashionable among the top players, I would say, uh, for quite a while now. Yeah, it's true. And uh, we have Carlson with white today. Yesterday he was black against Amin. And uh, in a way, Amin chose a setup which, uh, which was rather uh, closed. Um, the position, the pawn structure was really closed and there was not really anything Carlson could do. And then came this second round, as today actually, this second round without anticipating, of course, but the next game is going to be crucial because this is going to be Maxim Vashilagrav against Carlsen. So if Carlsen should win against Maxim in, let's say, half an hour from now, the tournament is basically over. I mean, we know the winner. It's, there is no question about this. Yes, but before that, we've got this game against Basim. Now, looking at this position, Yannick, it started as a Spanish, as a Royal of Earth, mm -hmm. and we have this Benoni kind of a structure now on exactly, the board. Exactly. Uh, you know, black has gotten that a6, b5 that he strives for. Uh, white is obviously aiming for a very successful e5 break in these positions, trying to time it well. You're right. And Bassem Amin is doing a good job putting pressure against this pawn, d5, because you, you've just mentioned that e5 is a very thematic pawn thrust. For, for White, trying to open the game, creating perhaps a pass pawn later on, on on the D file here, but with the pressure put on this pawn by the black pieces, it's not going to be easy for Carlsen to push E5. But, okay, not sometimes you can do it and even sacrifice a pawn. It's not completely impossible. For the time being, he decided to play B3, and the Egyptian player is actually taking more time straight it off on a4 mm -hmm. so and take taking back here um that operation is an invitation to occupy this open file from magnus carlsen which he certainly will do in a it feels you needed a specific future. idea when you took on a4 i don't really like opening the b file precisely because of what you guys are saying white has the upper hand in occupying this open uh, B file right now. And he does that immediately. You see the position of the rook on B1, the queen on C1. He's going to take over this game, I think, quite quickly. It's a slight edge, it's an annoying edge, I think. But more than that, it's a permanent one. You have the center, you have the B file, and it's very difficult to coordinate black's pieces. Look at that bishop on B7. But there is a big difference compared to yesterday's game or to yesterday's Carlson, I would even say. 25 moves played. In this game, he has spent about a minute only so far. And the and position is far from easy. And we already have the first result of the day as Sergei Karyakin absolutely annihilated 
Veseling Tapalov. I just want to point out the final position of this game where Knight takes f6 was played. Everything pinned, everything getting checkmated. You cannot even take here because after bishop f6, look at this pin. You cannot even prevent queen g7 checkmate. I'll show you exactly how this happened after the games are finished. But that was a demolition by Sergei Karyakin over Veseling Tapalov. Yeah, we shouldn't forget that Ser Sergei Karyakin has been the world champion in Blitz. So it, yesterday he had this kind of they semi shade nothing special but he can pull it off and he can score something amazing as well i mean he's capable of that but let's let's go back to magnus carlsen against so what basim wants to do here is to try and trade minor pieces on the e5 square and also challenge the b file because that's the, that's where white could be dangerous with bringing the rook to b8 yeah he's done a very decent job so far but there is there is pressure here. Look at this pawn on g6. This is a key pawn for black. It should never really move. I mean, whether you advance it or take on h5, there is always going to be e5. And look at the bishop on c2 here. But which is why black needs a piece on e5 to really block at it and make sure that white never gets in. Uh, but guys, gets e5 in. But can he go e5 immediately? He's thinking about knight f5. Look at that hover, oh, wow. hovering over the knight. I think it's more precise to take on g6 first. I don't know why you wouldn't take there first. But knight f5 might be an incredibly strong move wow. show us the point after pawn takes pawn takes, pawn takes. the Queen activation like of this. the re lopez bishop that bishop on c2 every grandmaster knows this how powerful this, this guy wow. can be the rook lands on e6 f6 will be pushed that king on h7 is not going to survive i think magnus is just deciding whether he wants to take first he's seen the idea you yeah. saw, you saw that when the knight yeah Oh, oh wait, knight f1? No, he goes the wrong way. <laughs> knight f5 Completely was absolutely crushing. Well, after taking on g6. Remember the game yesterday against Nepomniachtchi. He had his opening on the ropes with an attack. He took a lot of time, exactly as now. Look at his time. Two minutes. So he's basically taken two minutes for his last few moves. But here, for this moment, knight f1. And I he think the point of taking on g6 first was that you have this square of e6 for the rook in that line that we saw. Sure. After you grab on g6, go knight f5. Take it and go rook e6, which is why that g6 trade was very important. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Alejandro pretty much destroyed his advantage after knight f1, but he's still Magnus Carlsen. Mm, so let's see. Now the Carlsen knight is going to from f1 to h2. He certainly wants to jump to g4, try to put pressure here against h6, which is not easy to protect. And, and we have the has result. Resigned. And that's huge. Lost. Already, we were thinking that perhaps he can save it, but within the seconds, he's simply lost. could catch up with Magnus. This is a big result for us. That and is. Magnus is yeah. just crashing through. Look at this move. E5, that bishop on D3. We've already talked about it. The Spanish bishop activating against the king. Knight D takes E5 was played. And bishop mm. G6. He just wants to have queen C2. Just queen C2, and this king cannot be defended. He gives wow. up the queen, but... Yeah. We guys, this is not going to hold. Actually, I mean, he hasn't seen rook a one. I, I don't think that he noticed that the rook e seven rook a one doesn't doesn't. And ninety seven queen c two. Queen c two just oh, picks up is, the yeah. rook, right? Mm. Yeah, this is just over. I don't even know why he's still playing. He's got two pieces for a queen, but that's. He's got yeah, uh, he's yeah two, soon. two pieces, but that's not so much. No, not at this level. I mean, and, and I think yeah, the, bishop no, the, bishop, up soon. the bishop is trapped. So he's just going to resign. Yeah. That's going to be three and a half points it's with eight rounds to go. Point. That's, that's way too much, guys. Yeah, it's over. I think I we think. can start talking about second place. <laughs> yeah. You can see this bishop on a6 has I mean, no squares. He's looking for... Handshake is incoming. Looking for an excuse to play on. But I believe... It's hard to find one here. Yeah. Well, that's a check. <laughs> check. Even if he went to F1, I wasn't sure what the yeah, follow-up was. Yeah, would happen, but... It doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, well eventually this, this maneuver, Knight F1, Knight H2, was not the killer blow immediately, but it proved Good enough. enough. White's pressure was, was strong, and he basically did not spoil too much with that, at least. Uh, he kept his chances, and, you know, it's very difficult to, to be in this situation for black. Um, you have to defend. There are many threats. You can see Magnus is quite surprised that Basim is yeah. not resigning already. We all are, but yeah, we're kind it's of his for full his right to do to, to think and take his time before 
before eventually reaching with her hand, his yeah, hand. Yeah, it's strange. And uh, right, we have it. And let's, let's take a look at this killing blow between Magnus Carlsen. Looking for an excuse to play on, but I believe... It's hard to find one here. Yeah. Well, that's a check. <laughs> check. 